Hello, I'm Christian Ross and welcome back to Octopus Do. I am basically picking up where I left off on the last video, which was weaving a tapestry on the Juliana's weaving goddess loom. This is part two of that. So if you missed the first part, definitely go back and watch that because I'm just picking up where I left off. So let's get started on part two. So for part two of this video, I've actually added a few extra things that I didn't use in the last video. So when I come across those, I'm just going to stop and let you know that, yes, that's what I used. A um, couple of things I'll go ahead and tell you about are a tapestry needle is going to come in handy. So that's one of these, which is a larger needle. It doesn't have a really sharp point. It's a dull point, but it's a large needle with a large eye. These are going to come in handy because they will um, allow you to weave in threads at the end if that's what you want to do. Uh, you really only need one of these. I just have two different ones here to show you that they come in different sizes, different lengths. It's totally up to you if you want to use one of these at all, but um, just use what you have on hand. Another thing I want to mention is that the last time I was talking about using tweezers. These are still tweezers that I'm using, but these have a bent end to them. They're like a bent nose plier. These are bent nose tweezers. These just happen to be the ones I picked up today. They're no different in the function here than your straight tweezers. So these are going to work out just fine with you. Either one of those that you have this is just what I happen to have today. So there's no difference. You don't need more tweezers than you already have. That. When it comes to the end and we talk about finishing our piece and getting it ready for display, because you're going to want to put it up on the wall and show everyone your work. Um, I'm going to kind of really like see what I can make up on that. Um, I have a couple of ideas. Some of them involved a few little wooden craft sticks that I've got here. Maybe some craft glue, like I'm using this fabric glue. And uh, even have some clothespins here to possibly hold everything together. So we'll see how that works out. So that's not something you have to put on your necessities list right now. It's just something that I'm going to try to make something of at the end and we'll see what happens. <laughs> So where I left off was adding more rows. We did the fringe, we did a basic field stitch, we did the fringe, and I basically, I said, I was gonna do a few more rows, you go do a few more rows and see how that goes. Well, I thought it might be important to talk about how to add some yarn once you run out, because unless you're working with this really long, like several yards, I think I said something about um, maybe two yards, pulling two yards off to work with at one time, unless you are working with just a, a ton of yarn at one time, then you're going to run out before you get to the end. So what do you do? Basically, I want you to weave in the ends and because yarn is, well, it really is, it's very fuzzy and um, the friction of the yarn is going to hold it uh, to keep it really from sliding. So we're just going to weave the yarn back in the ends. Let me show you what I'm talking about. It's going to be a lot easier than trying to explain it. Okay. The only yarn that we've used so far has been my first ball that I talked to you about, which is this uh, variegated or ombre color in this pretty tan, which unfortunately I noticed kind of matches the background of my weaving goddess. So I'm sorry if it's been hard to see. I'll do my best to try to get you some good close ups. And if you do have problems seeing the yarn, then maybe I'll make um, a couple of notes or a supplement a little bit later on that has something a little bit more contrasty. So you're going to be able to see it better. Anyway, my apologies about that. So I'm taking the same yarn that we've been using and I'm just going to cut a little piece off. It's not even a yard. 
because I want to run out to show you what to do. So with this, I'm going to attach it to my needle like I've been doing. No pressure. Put that loop through and put the end of my yarn through my loop. Or you could just tie the end of the yarn. Would have been easier. All right. Let me show you how I ended off the last piece that I was using. So basically, let me flip this over here. I've just been going back and forth. And after I turned this corner, I just wove a couple just you know, over that one, under that, over that, to where now the end of my yarn comes out the back. And it may have been a longer piece than that, but you see, I've got a few of those. I just came here and trimmed that. So the end of that piece is facing toward the back of my tapestry. So you can't see it from the front. So then, I come from the same side and I'm not going to start at the end here. I'm going to come up through this one because the last row that this guy went down is right there. So I'm going to come up as if my piece of yarn is just continuing the same path. I'm not going over um, any other I'm not going back over anything. I'm not backing up. So basically, you see he's underneath. So I'm just going to use my fingers and hold him down out of the way. And I come here with my needle and my new piece of yarn. And I come up where he would have come up. And then just continue weaving. So I go up, down, up, down, every other line. Here we go. Take that and just pull it through like normal. There we go. Now, here is the end of my yarn of the piece that I just added. So I slide this down and pull until it's right here at the end. So that means that the end of the piece of yarn that I just added is also facing under. So the end of my yarn is underneath there, just like the last one. And so those will stay facing the back. Now, when I'm done with this entire piece, what I can do is I can go back and I put a drop of glue on that and I can trim it really short. I could not the ends of those pieces if I want, if I didn't mind seeing knots on the back of my piece, especially if I'm going to back it with something, like I could put a backing of a satin, I could sew around that if I wanted to. Uh, so that's definitely an option. So just makes it a lot easier. There's no extra really anything. You just pick up where that string left off. Now I'm going to do a couple of rows with this just to lock that in. And we're going to talk about adding a textured yarn as a way to add texture to your design. Okay, I'm gonna stop right there and we'll get into adding textured yarn to give it a different design. So on this particular piece that I did, which was my first piece, I used this to make 
almost clouds, almost fluffy clouds. Basically, I did a triangle coming in from this side and then a more narrow triangle coming in from that side. So basically, I just started and then got longer and then got skinnier again. And so I could do that. But I was going to see if I could use this and maybe make a heart this time. So basically, I'm going to take some of this yarn. Let's see. I really don't know how much it's going to take. I know it doesn't take very much, but I don't want to work off the skein. So I'm just going to try. Let's see. One, two. Let's see what two yards gets me. So I cut two yards. There we go. And I'll show you what this looks like up close. It's really interesting yarn. So basically this yarn gives you kind of the impression of rice shaped pearls because it's spiraled by taking this big fluffy yarn and a teeny little thread is wrapped around it in a spiral pattern. And so that gives us some really cool spirals. So I'm interested to see how this is going to work out. So a heart shaped pattern, I'm going to start with the point of the heart down here and go up haven't taken this needle off yet, so just to get it out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and take that off. So I'm making this, I'm really making this up as I go along. So let me find the middle here. So basically, these two are the middle. And so I'll remember that I'm holding them up and I'm just going to take this needle and I'll slide it under there. So I know that that's the middle. Tell you what, I'm going to try going down on either side of these two in the middle. So taking the end here and I'm just using my fingers. Actually, let me use my tweezers for this. So tweezers are going to go underneath and reach up so I can grab the end, pull it that way. And then I'll take this guy. So tweezers are going to come up on this side and grab the end and pull. All right, so I'm just going to pull this so that I'm pretty much in the middle of my yarn and I'll just grab the ends to see how that works. See if it is the middle. Close enough. All right. I have one kind of bump there that's coming toward the top. So I'm going to cross the ends of these lines in the back underneath. So I'm just going to grab the end with my tweezers here. Go, I'm going to go underneath and I'm coming up one more row over from where I went down. So pull that and then I'm going to cross this guy, this other end underneath, grab that and push him up one more row on this side. Let's see what that looks like. So basically I've crossed over the back. I've got that one loop here and then I have the ends coming out one more. So then I'm going to start making the rest of the heart shape, which is going to come up like a V. So I want to come over here and go down the same row that this guy came up. So see, that one came up, so I'm pushing it down. So it's crossing over top there. 
And then this side that came up is going to cross over that way. So I'll reach up here, grab this and pull. So I now have these two crossing over. And I'm not pulling this really tight because I don't want these warp threads to really go anywhere. I don't want them to go in at the middle. I don't want to cinch this tight. So basically I'm just laying this new fluff, more fluffy cord down on top. I'm not pulling tight. So I need to keep making the V spread out a little bit more. So this guy on my right hand side here, I'm going to grab the end and come up one more over. So there we go, grabbed it, grabbed it. And I'm gonna hold this down while I pull. So I'm not gonna to pull too tight. So there, that came over one more. So this is the one that exited on the left side. So I'm gonna go underneath and come up one more over on this side. So grab that and pull. And now it's getting a little bunched up. So I want to loosen this up so I'm not causing this to bunch up. Just laying down. All right, so that's spread out some. Now, I'm going to cross those over just like I've been doing. So let's see, I've been starting with my right, so I'll keep doing that. The right goes over here, and I'm going down one past the one that just came up. So go down right there, grab it, fold everything down. And pull and then cross the left over the right. One more past. This is awesome. It's uh, quite a fluffy looking heart so far. So I'm gonna keep doing that until I get as far out as I want to go. I'm not sure how far I want to go, but as far as I, out as I want, and then I've got to figure out how to come back in and do the, um, the cleft. Uh, that might actually be a little bit of thread added on. So let's see. Okay, put the right underneath and come up one more past. There we go. And the left underneath. Okay, that's what we've got so far. All right, then right over left. So right coming over. Oh, that's bending a bit too much for my taste. All right, going one more past. And left over right. this point I need to um, start making the upper lobes. So I think to do that I'm going to split these off again. So I'm going to grab my right hand here, right hand side, and remember I put the needle here that showed me where the two in the middle are. 
So I'm going to go underneath and split that middle. So underneath here and come up in between those two. I'm not sure quite what I'm going to do with that yet, so I'm going to come back and go down in between and grab my left hand side and pull it up. So I'm looking at this, and I think I can just do that maybe twice. Oh, I like that. All right. So if I keep them completely split, they do that. But I want them to go around each other. And so that still gives me a little bit of that separation because they're coming up from there. But it's not as big of a split. All right. So I'm go, going to go across and come down the same row as this last one did. So that's two from the end. Remember, I'm making this up as I go along. <laughs> so I would love to see what kind of ideas you guys come up with, definitely. All right, take this side and it's going down that same row. There we go. Make sure that's not pulling too much. I think it needs uh, maybe just a little bit more on those lobes. So let's see. I'm going to take the end of this guy and hmm, I'm not going to come up the exact middle. As a matter of fact, I think I'll come up one over from the middle. So go underneath and come up one over. And down, like here's where they're even. So I'm going to go down this row, which is one less than the one before. There we go. Same thing on this one. So he went down that side. So come up one less than the middle. And then go back down one less than the end. Looking at this, and this is very heart shaped now. It's pretty cool. I think I'm going to do one more row just to make sure. So grab this guy. I don't know whether guys, anyway, this guy and let's see, he came down here. So let's go up one less than where he came up before and go down one less than where he came down before. Uh, anyway, you know, one less. Let's see what that looks like. You see, I'm not pulling this tight so I can get whatever little bit of fluffiness I want. So I think that's going to be good. And then do the same thing on this side. So he's gone down this row. So I come over here where he came up last was here. So I'm putting my tweezers down here, reaching over, grabbing the end, and pulling that through. And then he's got to go back down to the opposite side. So down one less. So he's just going around two warp threads at this point. Fluff him up a little bit. I'm liking it. I, I think that's a rather cute heart. So I'm going to leave it like that. Now, what do I do with these ends? Okay, well, let's figure that out. I think I'm just going to put them to the back right now so that they won't get in the way. I don't know what I'll do with them after that. We'll see.
So I'm going to take my large needle out because that was just a placeholder for the middle for me. And I'm going to put all of this toward the backside. There we go. Flip over my loom. And let's see. I just want this all to stay to the back. So I'm going to just put a knot in it, not even close to the work because I may decide to do something else. I may sew it down, I may do something like that. So you see, I've got quite a bit of room here. So I'm just putting a knot there so it won't get in the way and then I'm going to cut off the extra. So it looks like I didn't quite need that entire um, piece, but that's okay. Now, what do we do? Because all of this other yarn that we've been using is so nice and neat and organized and it goes in straight lines. And now I've introduced this odd shape. Well, what I'm going to do is weave around it so that this puffed up piece stands out and looks like it was already there. There wouldn't have been any room if I had tried to put this on. I could have like cross stitch, I guess, uh, sewn this through, but I think it would have pushed things out of the way and done things like that. So I didn't want to do that. So let's go back and just sew in all the blank spaces. You know, I could use my large needle since, uh, you know, it, it's great for this. It, you know, that's what I've been using so far. But I think since I'm working in smaller areas, trying to fill in smaller areas here, I think I'm going to use my tapestry needle at this point. So I'll set this aside and grab that needle. And the really cool thing about this is it does have a really large eye. So my yarn will go through this. Um, if my yarn didn't go through the eye on this, I have a tutorial on how to get a big thread or piece of yarn into a small needle um, video. It's a quick tip there uh, called um, big yarn or big string small needle, something like that. Uh, but it's a leadered needle trick that I learned from my friend, Sandra Younger. So that's a good video. If you wanted to pause this, go check that out and come back, or if you're lucky enough, your needle is big enough that the yarn will fit through. So I'm using the same weaving technique of just going up and down every other one. And then when I get to this part, that is the warp thread next to my little heart here. I'm going up and out through that and pull, making sure not to pull this too tight. And I can come in with my pliers and push everything down, even hold the end so I don't pull it too tight. And then turn around and go back the opposite direction right here. I'm not going all the way across. I'm just going back. So flip my needle around. Just repeat that and fill in all of the spaces. Once you get this side done, then go over and do this side. And don't forget the trick if you need to add more yarn. Definitely do that, and uh, I'll see you when that part's done.
All right, I'm not sure how far you've gotten along on yours, but I have filled in the space all around the heart that I did just with regular weaving. So basically, and again, I'm playing this by ear, um, I think in the space down here below, I'm going to maybe add a charm or something, um, a stamp, something like that, or a patch, maybe. That would be really cute. And then I think up here, I'm just going to get ready to finish it off. Now, I'm not going to take this off of the loom because I found that embellishing uh, these pieces it tends to be easier while it is still stretched out on the loom. I will wait to take it off, but I'm going to show you a different stitch other than just weaving in and out that I picked up off of that blog that is looks kind of like a chevron. I found I really like that uh, because it gives it uh, the finishing edge to it. So let me show you how to do that. I've come out on this side, and I have just a little bit of my yarn left here. I've come out from underneath on this side. So I'm wrapping around and I'm going to go down, not the first, you know, if you're weaving in and out, you go under, over. No, I'm going to go over two rows here. So I've come out underneath, I'm going to go down after two, but I'm not going to go straight across. I'm going to pull this back, if I can show you. All right, so I'm pulling this back and going up in between the two that I just went over. Okay, so I've gone over two and around this one and back up. So I'm coming up in between these two right here. So I'm going over two, like so. So I went over those two and up in between them. And remember, don't pull tight, because if I pull tight, it would, squish these together and I don't want to do that. So I'm just pulling up. So you're going over two and back up one. So over these two. And you can use your Jewel Loom larger needle for this if you want. There's no problem with that whatsoever. That's this guy right here. I've just found that for turning these corners and things, I'd rather use my tapestry needle. So back up in between. So I'll go all the way across using this technique. So go over two. And back up one. All right, then you get to the end, you do the same thing. You're going over two and back up the last one, like so. So it gives you this really cool spiral pattern. Now, make sure you use the comb on that to make sure everything is lined up evenly still. Slide it down, 
Good old press. That's how you keep everything even. Now, if you want to make kind of a chevron look, because you see how everything's slanted kind of this way, like everything's going, you know, that way. And if you want to make a chevron look, you need to make everything go that way. So we're going to do the same thing, but in the opposite direction. So how we do that is once we've gotten to the end here, we kind of have to turn our needle around. So what I'm going to do, since this is coming out right here, I'm going to go down a row and come through like so. Pull that. Remember, don't pull it too tightly. And just go over this last stitch. So I'll go down so that I'm coming out underneath. That lets me come out because I'm going around this one, over two, and I'm starting my chevron from the opposite direction. So go over the two, but I have to back up one. Oops, I've got a little piece of, an end piece of my yarn there. Get that out of the way. All right, so I've gone down and over. So over these two, but back up one. So I go over these two and back up one. It's like a back stitch. There you go. So over the next two, but back up one. So it goes one, two, and back up that one. And if you need to, use your tweezers to make sure everything is snug, but not pull too tightly. There we go. There we go, back to the other side. So, stretch that out. Use the comb, make sure it's all nice and even. And even while I have this here, I can pull and nothing's going to shift. So I can give it a little bit of more tight now, this is pretty much the end of my piece, the top of my piece, because after this is where I'm going to attach the rod that's going to make it hang. So at this point, I'm going to take this little bit of yarn that's left over, and I'm just going to bury the end of it into a little piece on the back so that it keeps that end out of the way. So, so I'm just going to hold this here, kind of flip it over a little bit and just sew down so that it'll hold this bit in place like that. And I'm going to cut off this extra. That's just going to keep all this yarn out of the way. And there we go. Now, I'm looking at this and thinking now would be a good time to embellish it a little bit, and then we'll talk about how to hang it up. I 
I specifically chose more of a neutral palette because I wanted to embellish it and I thought this would look beautiful with some metallics and maybe some rose coloring and maybe some white pearls. So that was the palette that I chose to add a little bit of metallic color. So the first thing that I'm going to add is I got this it's really embroidery floss and it's a beautiful metallic kind of a rose gold or champagne color. Just going to pull some of this off. All right, I just have to decide where I'm going to use this. And I think one thing I would like to do is kind of use it on this heart and I can take some of these looser puffy strings and maybe tack those down with it. So I'm going to come up from the underside and just like sewing, just kind of play around and see what this ends up looking like. All right, I didn't put a knot in the end of this, just like before, I'm letting it hang loose, give myself a tail, and I'll uh, glue it down or tack it down later, tie it down, I'm not sure. But uh, so I came up right here and I'm just gonna sew back down and play around with this and see what I get. All right, and so I think I'm going to go over some of this puffing as well uh, to try to pull some of that down in the middle. So I'm just going to sew up toward the middle from the back side. And then maybe, maybe a big X right there. that way over both of those. And then up this side. Go down over here. There we go. I really am making this up as I go along. You know, art can be pretty fun. I like it. All right, you know what? I think I might leave that there. And um, hmm, what else can we do to this? I know we can add some beads. I'm not sure what that would look like. You know, I think I'm just going to, to uh, leave that like this um, for right now. 
I may come back and add some beats later. If I do, I'll uh, pop in and show you guys and, and see what that looks like. But I think we're to the point now where I just want to show you how to finish this off, take it off the loom, and then just play with it however else you like. So the next step is taking this off the loom. This is looking really good so far. The final step is to be able to take this off of the loom and display it, which I like the idea of hanging it up. There's so many other things that you could do. You could frame it, um, so on and so forth, but we're just gonna make a nice, simple hanger for this piece. Now, I have a lot of string to work with. I have a lot of yarn to work with. You see at the bottom of this, here's the end and all of my woven um, piece ends right here, but I have all the fringe. And so then I have this much space, which is about two and a half inches before it reaches the bottom. For this part, I'm just going to knot these together so that the strings don't slide out, but I'm not taking it off the loom to do that just yet, because all of that, anything that I do back here or under here will be hidden by this fringe. So you're not gonna see a bunch of knots. So that one will be easy. Now for the other side, I've got all of this space and you know, I could have woven it the rest of the way. I could have filled this up completely with a beautiful woven, but you know, I figured you'd want to see the end of this video at some point. So I figure I would stop here and we'll see what we can do. Now, like show you up here. This is what I've got so far. To end this, I think what I'm going to do is make a wood frame to sandwich the pieces in between, almost like a clamp. So I have these craft sticks that I just picked up local ho hobby store. Um, they're very close to what you would find to stir your drinks, like your coffee and things like that. So I've got two of them. I'm just going to lay them down right there. Then I also have, uh, this is a fabric glue. And so it's going to hold my yarn and it will work on wood as well, and it dries clear. So I'm going to use that to sandwich everything together. So I'm going to open this up, and I haven't used it in a while, so I've got to use my tweezers to get that dried bit of glue out of the top. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, didn't shake it up. Don't forget to shake it up. Going to Pour a little bit out onto just a scrap piece of paper here. Old earring card, really. And the reason I'm doing that is because I don't want to put too much on the sticks. I don't want to just glob this on because I don't want it to smear out everywhere. Because you know how that works, too. <laughs> it's a nice, thick glue. It's not runny. This, so this is um, Crafter's Pick find it with a lot of uh, Amy K. Sweet McNamara's Soutache kits because I'm going to take another of the craft sticks because they come in a huge bundle and I'm going to use that to kind of paint on the first stick. A little bit of glue on there and again I don't want it just gushing out everywhere so I'm just putting a thin coat a non-toxic glue so I'm not worried about getting it on my hands or anything like that and if you do it's kind of like you know the regular paper glue like when you were a kid in school you can just peel it off so that's not such a and there you go see I've got it on my fingers so that's not really such a big deal and this glob that I poured out here is way more than I'm even going to need I'm going to take this on the underside Gently lift up my project here and just slide it down to where it meets that last chevron row. And I am just eyeballing the length here because if I have one side longer than the other, I can just cut it off. But, uh, you know, 
it wouldn't be a bad idea to measure it. It's never a bad idea to measure. So just to see, I've got 40 millimeters, four centimeters on one side, three and a half on the other. So I need to move it over just a little bit. All right, and then I'm taking the second stick and just laying it on top, making that sandwich that I was talking about. And to get that to stay, I mean, it's sticking to the yarn really well, but to get the pieces to stick to each other, that's where my uh, clothespins are coming in. And I'm just going to let that dry. We'll come back in an hour or so and work on the next step. All right, it's time to finish it up. I've let this set for a little while, but I couldn't wait an hour. You know, I'm already planning my next 10 projects. So I figure I would take this down a little bit early and um, hope the glue doesn't come apart yet. You want to really don't do this, like let it sit for at least an hour, but um, we'll, uh, We'll see what happens. So the first thing that I'm going to do, to do is finish off the bottom that goes under the fringe. That's going to be the easiest part. So I'm going to lift the fringe up here out of the way. So there we go. Now I'm going to cut this off of the loom. Ooh, this is the exciting part. So basically, where I tied everything off in the back side here, I'm just going to flip this over and give that a little snip. Oh, nothing too uh, nothing too exciting happened. So good, we're good. And then I'm just going to very gently, um, I'm just going to go in with my scissors and snip each row. You know what? I'm going to turn it over. I have plenty of string to work with, plenty of yarn to work with. So I'm just going to come in and cut it from the front. That's going to be the easiest thing. I'm trying to be too careful. It's like, you know, those people that uh, when you are opening Christmas presents and they want to just, you know, peel the tape and every little. Yeah, that's me. We're not going to do that. We're just going to cut all of the strings. So I have this loose part here. And then on the other side, I can just slip this off. So just pull that down. And this just flips over. Thank you, Loom. You've done your job beautifully. I really appreciate it. Set her to the side. Now. I'll come in here. You see, I've got the fringe out of the way and all of these little end pieces, and I'm just going to tie them in a knot. I'm just going to start from one side and go to the other. So I'm just doing overhand knot and don't pull tight. Remember, don't pull tight. We've done good with that so far. And in the second part, there we go. Same thing here. And that is just to keep all of these weft threads that we've woven back and forth from sliding off the end.
I'm going to come back in here. And so I don't mistake any of these little trailing ends for my fringe. I'm just going to cut them shorter. And then after they're glued, I will cut them off. There we go. All right. So now I won't mistake any of these little end pieces for my fringe here and I won't glue my fringe. That's pretty important. So I'm just going to sit this down for now because I'm going to address the top and I don't want to have all that wet glue running around unchecked. So I'll set this down. And remember, it hasn't been glued, so I'm not going to do much to it because I don't want it to come out. All right. So now on the other side, this is where I glued these two craft sticks together and I used, oh, it's staying. Love it. All right. So I used my clothespins for that. So I have all of this yarn left over for the top. And then here's where you can see these craft sticks are just pinching that yarn in. I think what I'm going to do with this is maybe do something decorative. I may come back in and maybe weave um, something along there before I trim it, but I'm not quite sure. But I do know, like, even if I just wanted to take this and fold these behind, then this these sticks, this frame is going to hide all of the, the extra pieces. So that's cool. Um, so basically, not sure what I'm doing with that. Um, may even just cut it off short because I know it's glued in there. Um, yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. Oh, all right, you guys with me? I'm going to, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. No going back after this. So I'm going to trim these down. So I have little pieces sticking up there, so I'll probably go in there with my precise cutters and uh, trim that down. Uh, maybe even where I see like some splintering and stuff in this craft sti stick, I may even polish it up with a jewel tool, but that's gonna give you an idea of what it would look like so far. Ah, that's cool, all right. So that's what I've got so far. So in order to hang this, um, I'm going to take some of that textured yarn and I'm using, hmm, that looks to be about a foot, maybe 13 inches or so. All right, so I have this here. And the really cool thing about this is it will kind of fray out. So it'll give me almost a tassel effect at the end. But what I'm going to do, let's see. I want to make a loop. So let's do, oh, I know. Let's use the, um, that metallic cord. Oh, yes. I really am just doing this as I think of it, I, I promise you. All right, I'm turning this around toward me. I am doing that same thing. I'm just making a loop. There we go. And holding it, holding the end of my metallic cord, just wrapping that around. And tying it off. And second tie. All right, and then I'll come in and trim that. So what I've done here is because it's just a loop, I can just slide that over the end. 
and then I can let that kind of fray out. All right, let's do the same thing for the other side. Hold it all in my hand there, just wrap it around several times. Cool. All right. And then tie it off. And cut that extra and slide that over the end. Fringe it out. <laughs> That's just cool. All right. So basically, uh, oh, we didn't talk about the back side. Let's go talk about the back side really quick. So this is where all of the times I've added yarn is kind of a, a messy backing. So I'm just going to trim these a little close. Closer. All right. Now I'm going to take my GS Hypo Cement and I'm going to just put a dab where all of these come out and then I'm going to trim off the extra. I'm also going to put the Hypo Cement on the back here on these knots and do the same thing there and I'll be good to go except for just the little finishing on that to get rid of all those little nubs. So basically, um, I'll show you one or two here and then we'll hang it up and see what it looks like. So I'm just taking this GS Hypo Cement and putting a drop of glue. I don't want it to bleed to the front. So I'm just putting a little bit there like so. I wait for all of that to dry and then I go back and trim it all and there you go, you'll be done. And same thing with the knots on the end. So let's see what it looks like. This guy down right here. And put up the new one. So this is what I've got so far. Uh, it's pretty much finished except for the devils in the details, you know. Wouldn't this look really pretty hanging on a doorknob? Maybe to your guest room when you have people to come visit and uh, it would be very welcome. I am going to add some beads. Can't stop embellishing. Gotta have the sparkle. Um, but I'm pretty proud of it so far. So I would be very interested to see what you guys make. So please definitely uh, drop me a line in the comments below. Feel free to share on Instagram or um, yeah, on Facebook. Find me on Facebook, any of that. And uh, I would love to see what you make. If you have any questions or any comments about this project or any others that I've done so far, definitely leave those for me in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget, once you subscribe, to click on the notification button and that way you'll know when my next videos come out. And uh, don't forget to give me a like because all of that helps me in the long run and I get to make more videos to bring to you. I really hope you enjoyed this project and I can't wait to see what you make. So now you know, go make something.